Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is great to be at BaselCon. Um, thank you for choosing to spend your time here with me today, and I hope you find this uh, talk worthwhile and insightful. My name is Pejman, and I'm going to talk about uh, how to build a, a great uh, JavaScript build tool chain with Bazel. I um, would like to start that uh, with uh, briefly talking about a very well-known but seemingly elusive subject, developer productivity. Uh, this is a, uh, I guess, long-time passion of mine. Uh, it's tempting, uh, therefore, for me to ask what developer productivity is or how we could measure it. But um, we would likely end up with different answers and run the risk of getting too philosophical. It uh, wouldn't be too productive. Um, but we're all developers here, uh, so let me instead ask uh, a question I, that I'm sure we all give the same answer to. What does it feel like to be productive? Um, we're productive when we're on a roll. Everything just works the way it's supposed to. Um, and we accomplish what we set out to do without uh, too much effort or distraction. And uh, the, this occasional feeling of being in the flow of building and creating makes software development fun, <laughs> right? So I like to think uh, that this state of flow has two elements, um, performance and simplicity. To be productive, things need to work well, and they need to work fast so we can iterate quickly and feel that we're making progress. If you have to wait a long time, uh, to get feedback on uh, the code change that you're making um, is working well or as expected, then uh, it would be too long and boring uh, to keep us in this state of flow. Uh, we would be easily distracted uh, to check our phone or go grab uh, coffee while our build is in progress or our uh, tests are running. So short feedback cycles are incredibly important uh, for developer productivity, but they're not enough. For us to remain in this state of flow, uh, things need to be intuitive as well and straightforward. Uh, we don't want to get distracted uh, by our tools and processes uh, or how we are using those. So in an ideal state of flow, uh, our sole focus is the job at hand. We can find successful examples of developer-friendly tools with these two characteristics in the JavaScript ecosystem. JavaScript developers are spoiled with options when it comes to intuitive tools with short feedback cycles. And thanks to this abundance of options, the tools in the JavaScript ecosystem have evolved uh, to interoperate and play nicely with each other. Naturally, developers expect uh, that from new tools and frameworks uh, and expect that these tools find the right place in this ecosystem um, to fit the pattern of other tools and frameworks around them. So unlike this Museum of Arts building in Graz uh, that screams incompatibility. Now, interoperability is important because Bazel is not a set it and forget it solution. It needs to be fitted and tailored uh, for developers' use cases. And if developers cannot see how Bazel uh, fits within their suite of tools and frameworks, it's only a matter of time uh, for uh, them to ask wouldn't we be better off not using Bazel? Um, so this uh, treating Bazel as an additional layer of complexity uh, is what drives them to ask this question. So, and that is not productive. Um, in the next half hour, we're going to go beyond how to use Bazel to build our you know, web applications and focus instead on how to make Bazel a better fit for the JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, to create a fast and seamless, friendly experience for developers that makes them more productive. Now, a little about me. Um, I'm a staff software engineer at Aurora. Uh, I'm part of our technology foundations team, uh, building tooling and infrastructure uh, uh, to improve developer experience and productivity. My team and I uh, help accelerate the development of our web applications by maintaining our core libraries and uh, build system toolchain. I have eight years of experience in building and maintaining mission-critical software systems. I started my career at uh, VMware Carbon Black, then moved to Canon to build medical uh, imaging software for 3D visualization of uh, CT and MRI datasets. Then I left Canon to start a developer tools startup uh, focused on reg continuous regression testing, which shut down after two years. And uh, then I joined Aurora to do what I do today. 
At Aurora, our mission is to deliver the benefits of self-driving technology safely, quickly, and broadly. Um, every year, more than 40,000 people in the U.S. and one and a half million people around the world are killed in traffic accidents. We are building technology that provides an incredible opportunity to save lives, uh, to make our roads safer, and give more people access to mobility. We are always looking for great engineers, so if you like to work for a noble cause and at the forefront of technology, I hope that you consider joining us. We use Bazel at a scale at Aurora uh, to build more, our more than 300,000 uh, targets um, locally or as part of our CI that runs uh, more than 50,000 jobs per day. Uh, while most of our code base is written in C++, we have a diverse and ever-growing suite of uh, almost 40 web applications uh, that uh, are growing fast. So these applications are growing in size and complexity as well. And every month, new applications get spun up and created and added to this list. These applications serve different purposes, from visualization to logistics management. Uh, they have varying business needs uh, and business values and are developed and maintained by different teams with different development budgets and practices. Now, uh, while we all make effort to maintain a consistently uh, high software quality across all of our applications, there are always inconsistencies, which makes us end up with a collage of applications um, with different characteristics. And when it comes to the build process, these differences show up as different configurations and customization points. But we all uh, know from the Hiram's law that anything that can be customized will be customized. And uh, this is my point. Um, customization fosters complexity. So my team and I work to tame this complexity and to make it easier for our web the development teams to maintain their applications and uh, develop features faster and easier. We treat other teams as our customers and perform a comprehensive survey every year to identify what their common significant pain points are that we should set out to solve. And uh, the results of a recent survey uh, <laughs> that we did were loud and clear. Our developers were sharing as their top two most frustrating pain points uh, that our builds were too slow and too complex. Naturally, over the past six months, uh, my team and I have tried to solve these problems. So here's the story of what we've done and what you could do to, to make your builds faster and simpler. Now, let's start with the first problem, improving performance. And here's a shocker. You cannot improve what you cannot measure. Improving the performance of any process starts with really understanding it by measuring and profiling every step of that process. Fortunately, Bazel has a very rich set of tools for doing just that. Uh, you can use JSON trace profiling to get a detailed analysis of the build process for any given target. You can uh, then feed that profile to Bazel Analyze Profile to report the performance of various build phases. And you can then use Chrome tracing to visualize um, your build profile and better understand what Bazel spent time on. Regardless of what you are using Bazel for, it is to your benefit to learn uh, how to use these tools and use them effectively. So let me show you how. To generate the build performance profile, all you need is to pass dash dash generate JSON trace profile along with dash dash profile and the location where you want to write the generated file. At Aurora, we choose to pass a few extra options to get more uh, detailed information and more deterministic results. Now, once you generate the build profile, you can use Bazel Analyze Profile to produce a simple summary report. This report also includes the list of most time-consuming actions in the critical path of the Bazel build. Uh, but that part is not included in this slide. But the real insight comes from visualizing the build profile using Chrome tracing. In this interactive flame graph, you can uh, immediately identify the performance bottlenecks in your build logic and uh, narrow your focus down to resolving those bottlenecks. What you see on this slide is the actual build profile of one of our most complex web applications at Aurora that used to ne take nearly 12 minutes to build uh, from clean slate. You can see the long single threaded action in pink uh, here. Um, that is just a single direct invocation of Webpack um, that is responsible for a better half of those 12 minutes. Uh, this visualized build profile was crucial uh, in helping us improve the build performance of this application by nearly 20% just by upgrading Webpack to the latest version. 
Now, in any performance improvement project, there are usually a few low-hanging fruits. And we were fortunate to find quite a few low-hanging fruits um, at, uh, uh, when we started this uh, task. And uh, the reason was no one had ever started to like, have a concerted effort to reduce our build times. Uh, but in the process of fi finding those low-hanging fruits, we learned so much about our build process and the deeper underlying issues that resulted in the slow builds. In particular, we were using the JS library from the open source rules, JS rule set developed by the Aspect Dev team. Uh, to package our uh, shared libraries and application dependencies. These shared packages uh, were then handed off to a simple custom macro that invoked Webpack via a process call uh, to transpile and type, type check all of our TypeScript source files using TSC and perform other operations like bundling and compression. As all these operations happen outside of Bazel and in the single subprocess call to Webpack, we barely had any opportunity to uh, use the Bazel features and capabilities to optimize that process. Um, so it was all done in one single black box. So we got to work, and in two short months, and uh, through a myriad of little experiments, we came up with an improved version of our web application build toolchain that we call the Roadrunner. Roadrunner is intentionally designed as a series of loosely coupled improvements to various components of our existing build toolchain. We kept essential components like Webpack and Jest, but switched to using SWC along with the wonderful open source rule sets uh, from Aspect.dev to unlock 2x faster build times, 3x faster development server times, and 3x faster test execution times. 2x faster build times, 3x faster uh, development server times, and 3x faster test execution times. I see you're all getting excited. <laughs> Here you can see a visual representation of the performance improvements of Roadrunner for various developer workflows and its effects on various benchmarking metrics that we collect continuously. The green bars in every chart show the relative performance of our applications after upgrading to Roadrunner. So now that I, uh, hopefully I've shown you that Roadrunner is living up to its name, um, let's see how it works and let's better understand what makes it so fast. The Roadrunner toolchain yields significantly faster build times by offloading the transpiling and type checking of packages to Bazel. Instead of packaging the TypeScript uh, source files using JS library and invoking Webpack to process them using TS loader, we leverage the Bazel TS project of the rules TS repository um, to essentially transpile all uh, TypeScript uh, source files in Bazel using SWC for transpiling and TSC for type checking. We also changed the transformer used by Webpack from TS loader to SWC loader, which results in faster processing and execution of JavaScript files. Similarly, we use SWC Jest instead of TS Jest and leverage the rules Jest repository um, to enable faster test execution. Let's review these changes one by one. Uh, starting with the TS project rule, a high performance alternative to Bazel TypeScript from rules Node.js. In contrast to JS library that simply groups source files and declared dependencies together and doesn't run any action, such as transpiling and type checking, TS uh, project performs multiple actions. It validates the content of our TS config file and checks that the listed dependencies are actual TS info providers. It transpiles type uh, script source files and generates JS files. And it uh, performs type checking of all the source files, uh, generating type declaration files and kicking off the type checking of dependent projects uh, when required. Using TS project improves the build performance because it breaks up the work that we used to do in one long lift invocation of a pack into a set of the smaller work that we can effectively orchestrate with Bazel. It fits the Bazel paradigm. But we can go one step further and configure TS project to use SWC that is written in Rust as a faster and more Bazel friendly transpiler uh, than TSC, which is written in Node. SWC is more Bazel friendly uh, because it is designed to do well in short lived invocations to transpile a given module without too much overhead. This is unlike TSC, which takes a long time to warm up. And because SWC wants to be a drop-in replacement for transpiling uh, with TSC, it is designed with interoperability in mind. So we can use other tools for other parts of the tool chain. Now, SWC is an excellent alternative to TSC for transpiling, but as of today, our industry really is short of good alternatives to TSC when it comes to type checking, which is inherently slow, compounded by the fact that TS project performs type checking of dependent projects in series. 
this technical limitation may be resolved in the fu near future if and when we get a new isolated declarations option uh, in a future version of TypeScript. Now, fortunately, type checking does not need to be part of our critical path. And with TS project, it is not. So we don't need to pay any performance penalty uh, when using TS project for, uh, in workflows with tight developer loops. In fact, uh, in our experience, developers are used to relying on their IDEs for finding and fixing type errors during the development stage. So type checking with Bazel mostly affects build performance in the CI. On top of using TS project, we found that setting isolated modules and skip lip check in the TS config file uh, to slightly speed up transpiling and type checking respectively. The option isolated modules allows separate processing of uh, source files, which plays nicely with uh, 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 how Bazel invokes SWC. And uh, skip lip check allows the skipping type checking of declaration files in transitive dependencies, which is really a compromise between uh, performance and correctness. Let us now move on to a later stage of the build. Uh, once our source files are transpiled and type checked, uh, we still need Webpack for uh, bundling and other things. But Roadrunner changes how we invoke Webpack. Instead of directly calling Webpack by custom macros, we opted to um, use the rules Webpack repository as another open source rule set developed and maintained by the Aspect team. While this rule set is less polished, than rules TS, it enforces opinionated uh, Bazel friendly configurations uh, to create more deterministic output and uh, enable hermetic builds, both of which significantly improve the build performance. This is a clear example of how we uh, take an established and mature uh, toolchain component like Webpack and massage it to fit nicely uh, with Bazel. Similarly, um, like how we change TS project transpiler to work with uh, SWC, we can squeeze more performance gain by switching the TypeScript loader that Webpack uses from the TS loader to SWC loader. The performance gain here is not as dramatic as our change to the TS project, uh, because we are going to use this loader on the already transpiled JavaScript files. But this change allows us to reuse the same SWC configuration that we use with TS project. Now, rules Webpack and SWC are also helpful in enabling shorter feedback cycles. Um, now, in this uh, development workflow, we run the development server through iBasil to trigger a visual update of the web application on each um, change to the source code. But iBasil watches over the sandbox that only includes the transpiled JavaScript files. How do we make our changes to the TypeScript files um, trigger iBasil? To make this work, we need a little magic trick. We can declare our, uh, declare, um, declare our uh, TypeScript files as assets to the TS project uh, to be copied to the sandbox. This way, we can have iBasil watch over them too. Uh, but in this workflow, instead of rebuilding TS project on every code change, we can have the SWC loader in Webpack retranspile the single change files, uh, which in turn re-triggers iBasil to pick up the transpile file and initiate the visual uh, application update. Here is how this works. We are moving our SWC loader rule into a function that we can call once to match the transpiled JavaScript files and uh, once in the development server mode uh, to match our TypeScript file. This small trick enables bypassing TS project in this workflow and yields up to 2x faster feedback cycles for developers uh, than they used to get with TS loader. So um, it's only fair that we also use SWC and when, when running our test. And uh, it's natural to replace TSGest with SWCGest for running our unit test. And this is where SWC truly shines by delivering up to 5x uh, faster test execution times, while almost being a drop-in replacement for TSGest. Now, I say almost for two reasons. One, because SWCGest does not perform type checking, um, and it's doing less work by skipping the type checking that TSGest does, uh, which is why it's faster. Uh, but that's okay because developers can run, um, uh, you know, another Bazel target uh, test target to perform type checking as needed. And two, because SWC just handles mocking and spying of uh, just functions uh, differently than TS just. So getting things to work as uh, before is not always trivial. Now that our tests are faster, we can go one step further and adopt rules just to leverage Bazel features such as sharding and more effective caching. 
RulesJS uh, also elegantly supports a snapshot testing out of the box, which makes it nice and intuitive to run higher level tests. And uh, intuitive um, to basically for developers to use as well. This is another clear example of how we massage an existing toolchain component like Jest this time to fit the Bazel model so we can unlock the benefits of using Bazel. And speaking of higher level tests, we use Playwright at Aurora to enable our developers to perform end-to-end uh, -end visual regression testing of our web applications. Now, we have our own complex tooling around Playwright, uh, whose details fall outside the scope of this talk. But I thought I'd share the end uh, user interface of this framework here to show you how Bazel is helping us abstract away all of that complexity so that developers can run their high-level test with a simple Bazel run command. Now, this is a good segue to the second element we need to unlock, uh, we need to unlock developer productivity, simplicity. Uh, if you recall, I shared that our web developers uh, identified the complexity of, of Bazel as their second most significant pain point. I'd like to share uh, how we have tried to solve this problem with the design and rollout of our Roadrunner toolchain. We wanted Roadrunner to be fast to remove a slow builds as a pain point for our developers. But while coming up with a nice and fast proof of concept prototype is always a good start, as we all know, the real work lies in delivering the benefits of that prototype into the hands of our developers at a scale, um, who are our customers, um, so to make a meaningful impact on their day-to-day -day life. We wanted to make our improvements easy to roll out and seamless for developers to adopt. So instead of reinventing the wheel, we chose to focus on improving our existing toolchain components like Jest and Webpack. But this rollout presented the perfect opportunity for us to reduce the complexity of our build toolchain by unifying the configuration options we use for our toolchain components across our 40 plus web applications. By replacing application specific configurations with consistent and uh, reasonable organization-wide conventions, we wanted the Roadrunner to be the tool chain that just works. Now, one may argue that building an, uh, an extra interface is just an abstraction layer that hides away the complexity of the underlying system, but it doesn't remove or reduce it. But building a minimal interface is um, introducing an abstraction layer with a commitment to revisit all of your customization points and ruthlessly eliminating them. And if you recall, customization points lead to inconsistencies, which foster complexity. So a minimal interface reduces the complexity and makes it difficult for end users to go wrong. And it facilitates further improvements to the overall system by reducing its maintenance and migration cost. And this macro here is the minimal interface that we introduced uh, to our 40 plus web applications one by one as we upgraded them to our improved build tool chain. A single macro that is easy to read and make it really difficult for developers to uh, use it incorrectly. Now, this single macro takes the necessary information uh, to generate the variety of build targets that each web application needs. These targets include a TS project for transpiling and type checking, Webpack, targets for bundling and running a, a development server, a test target to run unit test, and a separate target to run our end-to-end -end test, uh, along with many other targets uh, that our applications use for packaging and deployment. But simplicity is not limited to designing high abstraction interfaces. It's also about removing friction and uh, distraction in the tools that we use. So an example of this in web application, uh, web development is how we use package JSON to declare application uh, dependencies. This is, of course, very different uh, than how we list dependencies with Bazel. But instead of forcing a change of habits, a good design is one that meets developers where they are. So is there a way to let them continue to rely on package.json and handle the mapping of those dependencies um, for Bazel behind the scene? Now, I'd like to say yes, and here's how. We can maintain a list of our, uh, all of our web applications that include a package.json file and use that list as input to a custom rule that parses the package.json uh, file and generates this big dictionary we call an NPM dependencies uh, that maps each project to its NPM dependencies. And we can query this dictionary inside our single abstraction macro to make everything happen in the background and create a seamless experience for our end users. And as the cherry on top, and to complete the design of our toolchain, we can go one step further and package our toolchain components into separate packages. 
This way, our end users don't need to list common toolchain dependencies uh, like Jest and Webpack and their plugins and every other node uh, NPM dependencies that they include uh, in their package.json file. They get them as a reward of using our minimal interface macro. This modular design also makes it easy uh, uh, to upgrade uh, our toolchain components and our dependencies or replace them with other tools. So I want to close with where we started and say that we can unlock developer productivity with Bazel by creating a build process that is fast and simple. Doing so for web development requires a deep understanding of the web development ecosystem, as well as the true character of Bazel itself. So we can uh, design a build tool chain that fits nicely with Bazel by leveraging its features and benefits and conforming to its expectations. But this is a two-way street. To deliver a great developer experience, Bazel and any build uh, system for that matter need to encapsulate their own complexity and get out of the developer's way by providing a simple and intuitive interface. Now, building this intuitive interface needs extra work and requires empathy and a willingness to compromise, to make Bazel a good citizen in the ecosystem of tools that developers use every day. And with that, I'd like to thank you all um, uh, once again uh, for your time and I invite you to share your thoughts and ask your questions. Thank you. Uh, yes, here in the front. Uh, that uh, dictionary that you mentioned in one of the latter, yeah, that one, is that, yes. is that a repo rule? Like, how are you? It um, is a repository rule, correct. It is? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, okay. correct. So, it's a repository. Uh, it's a custom uh, rule um, implemented in Python that par parses our package JSON and creates this uh, Bazel module that we can then load. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, any other questions? Oh, yes, here. Matt. Uh, yeah, uh, how, did you, how do you find the trade off between uh, the, what you said about simplicity with like that my web app? Uh, That's right, yeah, macro. the macro, the high level macro here. Uh, I can I can repeat the question. How do you find like the simplicity between like the trade-off between mm -hmm. the simplicity of like my web app and like the discoverability of uh, the targets of that macro? Yes. Uh, so the question is, how do you uh, basically find a balance between the simplicity and abstraction that you are introducing uh, versus the need for developers to know what targets are available to them for their application? I guess uh, this. Uh, is a very valid point uh, that need exists. And um, the trade-off that we are making is to say, hey, developers of this application, you know, uh, your workflow is to build your app, test your app, run your dev server, run your playwright server. Remember these five targets in your application. Uh, essentially, if that, those five targets are exactly the same name in, you know, across our 40 plus applications, then it's very easy for us to maintain them. Uh, and we don't have to like basically uh, go to teams and say, hey, please, you know, rename your target or whatever. Um, essentially, I think that trade-off is always uh, basically the, the 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 way to break that trade-off is always to think about the you know uh, maintenance cost. Uh, sometimes that maintenance cost is on the developer side, so you don't want to you know cost too much abstraction for them to you know basically have trouble you know maintaining their app. But in this particular case, and with Bazel in general, I think a lot of the complexity can be abstracted away from the developer's workflows. Um, another question? Is there any? All right. Well, oh, yeah, one question there. I, um, I think you said that for interactive type checking, you still rely on the IDE working. Uh, for those purposes, That's is right. that something that worked for you straightforward? Because in my experience, if you like heavily rely on Bazel and it's not buildable without Bazel anymore, 
you probably won't get like uh, don't have like an intact node modules uh, directory that actually works with IDEs that your type string works. Did you? Yes, uh, that's a very good point. Uh, we try to solve that problem by doing the extra work uh, on our team. So essentially, making sure that developers get that you know benefit when they're using uh, their you know IDEs, uh, that their path aliases uh, always include some you know uh, kind of like alias to the sandbox if need be. Uh, for them to, you know, find their generated files like protobufs and uh, others. So in general, I think, um, yeah, go ahead. So does that mean that uh, essentially your projects are also still buildable without directly invoking Bazel? Um, I would say not necessarily, no. Uh, we are so heavily invested in Bazel that I don't think we need, uh, at this point, we are not supporting any workflow outside of that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, Unless there is another question, uh, thank you again, and uh, have a great day, Subcon.